Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Good Friday worship. Tonight, we will be worshiping in a typical worship service, a little bit different than what we normally do, but we will be focusing on the seven words of our Savior from the cross, assuring us that our sins are paid in full. We're going to follow the order of service on page 38 of your hymnals. We'd the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. God most holy, look with mercy on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, be given over into the hands of wicked men and suffer death upon the cross. Keep us always faithful to him, our only Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson for this Good Friday is Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 to 6. Jesus took all our punishment for sin. We are all guilty, but Jesus was punished instead of us. We read, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 22. That is on page 71 of your hymnals. We recite the psalm together. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. 
My strength is dried up, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our second lesson is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Jesus paid for our sins once and for all. You are redeemed because of what Christ has done. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. This is the word of the Lord. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. Our gospel lesson for this morning, or evening, excuse me, is John chapter 19, verses 28 to 30. Completely spent from suffering the hell we had earned with our sins, Jesus drank the wine vinegar and assured us that our salvation is complete. <clears throat> Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. We continue our worship with hymn 108.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This evening we will be remembering the seven words which our Savior spoke from the cross. We begin with the first word. He committed no, no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Those are the words of the Apostle Peter as he looked back to what he saw as Jesus hung on the cross. Surprising, isn't it? Is that how you would have reacted to being humiliated, beaten, verbally abused, and then nailed to a cross even though you were completely innocent? I think you and I would have spit back as many insults and threats of revenge as we could. But not Jesus. There he hung, suspended between heaven and earth, enduring the scorn and shame and pain of the cross. He hung there, bearing the burden of the sins of the world, enduring death and hell, which our sins brought. He watched as they laughed at him and gambled away his clothes. He listened as they berated him and spoke all manner of evil against him. Yet he speaks words of God's greatest love. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Amazing grace. As Jesus prays for his enemies, asking the Father to grant his forgiveness on those who treated him with such scorn and contempt, he prays for those who nailed him to the cross and that their sins would not be counted against them. He prays for forgiveness for those who crucified the Lord of life. He prays for us. What joy there is in those words. They are the joy of our salvation. They are words that tell us that we are forgiven. God be praised that Jesus speaks such a prayer for us. Father, forgive them. Jesus was not the only one crucified that day. Just as Jesus had lived his life among sinners, he also died with sinners. Two other criminals were led out to the place of the skull that morning to be executed along with Jesus. We would judge both these men to be unlikely candidates for heaven. They had lived rough lives and had committed crimes worthy of death. Even as they hung on their crosses, their sins continued. Luke says, the people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today, you will be with me in paradise. Unlikely candidates for heaven? Yes, they were. But slowly one of those men fell silent and began to change. No longer did he heap abuse and insults on Jesus. No longer did he consider Jesus to be one of them. Instead, repentant faith began to show. He makes an open and full confession of his sin. He recognizes that he deserves a full judgment of God for his many sins. He confesses Jesus' innocence, that Jesus was truly the sinless, holy Son of God. And he sees and believes in Jesus as his Savior, asking Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
To such an unlikely candidate for heaven, Jesus promised the glory of heaven, saying, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Such is the measure of God's undeserved forgiveness and love for all sinners, even the most unlikely candidates for heaven. Today we recognize that we are no less sinners than those two criminals. We are guilty of ungodly living, breaking God's laws in the things we think, say, and do. No matter how good we have tried to be, we have all fallen far short of the demands of holiness and perfection. God has placed upon us. We are unlikely candidates for heaven. Yet Jesus died for us, and his blood covers all our sins. Through faith in Jesus, we have God's promise of forgiveness for all our sins. And so at the time of our death, we can be comforted by those precious words of Jesus that tell us that our souls will immediately be with God in heaven. This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Those were the words spoken to Mary 33 years earlier as she held in her arms her precious baby boy. As she stood there beneath the cross, she surely called to mind those words she had heard from the aged believer Simeon. Words she could never quite forget. Now she understood those words. Now she knew that the sign that would be spoken against was that cross to which her son was nailed, the cruel instrument of death. As she watched her innocent child die, her heart was pierced with grief as with a sword, and it hurt her deeply. John tells us about it. Near the, cross, Jesus, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus had come to perfectly and completely fulfill the law for us, and he did it even while he, the pain of the cross was taking his life. In fulfillment of the fourth commandment, Jesus was filled with loving concern for his mother. He entrusted her into the care of the disciple whom he loved, with the instruction that John now watch over her needs for the rest of her life. From the cross, we see our Lord's perfect obedience of the law for us so that we might be redeemed from the curse of our sin. At the same time, we see from Jesus that very love and concern that we are also to have for our parents. May we, by Jesus' great love for us, be moved to care for our parents, just as Jesus cared for his mother. I am the light of the world, Jesus had said. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. But there was no light that afternoon. Instead, a strange, eerie, unnatural darkness covered the world as the sun stopped shining. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Out of the darkness came a cry expressing the pain of a soul in hell, the agony of the damned. Hear him cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Lost in that moment is the heavenly Father's love and compassion for his Son. For as Jesus hangs on the cross, he is judged by the Father to be the sin of the world. For that is exactly 
what had been laid on him. Every lie ever told, every sharp word ever spoken, every thought that the human mind has produced, every disobedience ever done, every sin of every person for all time was placed on Jesus. He is sin. He, the Holy One, is the great sinner. Now He is abandoned by God, left to bear our sins for us and pay for the sins of the, an entire world. Now He pays the wages of sin as He suffers the very agony of hell itself. God released and poured out on Him His divine anger and justice in full measure, making Jesus take it all. Hell was being paid by Jesus for us. Now we are forgiven. Because Jesus paid for our sin and suffered the torment of hell for us, never will we have to cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God no longer holds our sin against us. Life and heaven are ours, and the fear of death and hell are gone. How shall we respond? Here we see the true nature of sin. Here we see its real wages. No longer will you and I take sin lightly. No longer will you and I find joy or delight in sin of any kind. Instead, we will put away the sins that so easily entangle us. We will live to God and His glory, living out our faith in Jesus. We will live lives of repentant faith they rejoice to serve God and do His will. Later, knowing that all was now completed and that so the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of a hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. All that the scriptures had said that Jesus would do to win our salvation was now completed. The blackness of a soul and, and hell had been endured. Sin's curse had been paid. Jesus had faithfully carried out all the work of salvation the Father had sent him to do. Knowing that this great work was finished, Jesus now says, I am thirsty. Crucifixion meant a slow, painful death. Among the tortures under a hot sun in the dry climate was a terrible thirst. Add to this the fact that Jesus had not had anything to drink for the last 15 hours. More than that, having put out so much energy as he suffered the pain and God-forsakenness of hell for us, it was time to rally his strength so that he could proclaim the victory of our salvation for all to hear. So he asked for a drink to relieve his thirst and revive his failing body. Even here, we find tremendous comfort and help. Jesus has completed our salvation for us. He perfectly kept all the scriptures for us. You and I can now say, I am saved. Jesus did it all for me. There is no question of our forgiveness and life. Because of this, we need not thirst for our salvation. It is one. It is ours. The crowds milling around the foot of the cross had called Jesus a loser. They had mocked him, throwing his own words back in his face. He saved others, they said, but... He cannot save himself. If he is a king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. With the blood running down his face where the thorns had pierced his brow and flowing from the nail holes in his hands and feet, Jesus looked like he had lost the battle against sin and evil. He had come to win. But as we listen to him speak his sixth word, we hear the words of a victor. It is finished, he cries. 
The victory had been won. The serpent's head had been crushed. The devil and all the forces of hell had been defeated by Jesus' suffering on Calvary. Paradise lost in Eden had now been regained on the hill outside of Jerusalem. It is finished. Such a simple statement those words are to us, yet they are so filled with meaning. Finished was the work of redeeming the world from sin. The debt owed for our sin was now paid in full, with no further payments due. God and man are now reconciled, and Satan's power to, to curse and condemn is ended. It is these words that make us sure of our salvation. No longer can guilt plague us. It is gone, finished. No longer do we need to try to make up for the wrongs that we do. Our debt has been paid. No longer do we fear the power of Satan. It has been broken. We are forgiven. We are free to live in the eternal victory of life in heaven. Jesus has seen to that, and he assures us of it. With those words of victory, it is finished. It is now all over. Peace had been made between God and man through one man's suffering and pain on the cross. Jesus speaks one last time. It is a word of perfect confidence. Luke says, It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness had come over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. With these last words, Jesus expressed the confidence that his Father is satisfied and has fully accepted Jesus' work to pay for our sins and give us eternal life. As he died, Jesus commits his soul into the hands of his Father for safekeeping until the third day when he would rise from the dead. We see in Jesus no fear of death. He had now paved the way through death to life. Jesus' final words have now become the prayer and comfort of all Christians in their hour of death as he leave this world and enter into the glory of eternal life in heaven. We need not fear death either, for it holds no terror for us. Jesus has conquered death and won eternal victory for us. So we too can face death with the same peace and confidence that Jesus did. For we know that our souls are safely in our Heavenly Father's safekeeping. And we also know that death will not be the end of us. For as Jesus rose, we too will rise to live with him in paradise. And all God's people say, Amen. We join together with the whole Christian church on earth and confess our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
At this time, we will have a special prayer for Good Friday. Lord Jesus Christ, in humble awe, in reverent silence, and in solemn trembling, your people have gathered around your cross to remember your death. O Christ, friends of sinners, have mercy on us. O Christ, Savior and Redeemer, have mercy on us. O Christ, only hope of a lost world, have mercy on us. At your cross, let us see all the ugliness, horror, and misery that sin, death, and Satan brought into the world, and that you willingly took on yourself. Open our eyes to see that we deserve the death and torments of hell that you suffered for us. But open our eyes also to see that by our death, you destroyed death. By your death, you destroyed death. By your sacrifice, you reconciled us with your Father. And by the blood you shed, you purchased us to belong to you forever. Help us believe that we are worth that much to you. Fill us with joy and peace in believing that we are truly free from condemnation and forgiven by our Father. Help us dedicate our lives in thankful love to you who gave yourself for us. Dear Lord, we thank you for being with our brother in the faith, Virgil Bubaltz, and for helping him through what was nearly a heart attack. Lord, you also allowed the doctors to find the cause of his bleeding. It was cancer. Lord, help Virgil through the treatment. Keep him strong and help him to improve to the point that they can do surgery. Help him through this struggle and heal him and keep the evil one far from him. Bless him, dear Lord. Lord, we also ask you to be with our brother in the faith, Lanny Kicker. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for him in the years gone by, but now continue to be with him. Strengthen his faith and his body. Send your angels to watch over him and give him the strength that he will need each day. And when you are ready, guide him safely home. Lord, we also ask you to end this pandemic. Lord, be with those who are sick and suffering. Heal them if it is your will and take this new threat away. If it is your will, allow our doctors to develop a vaccine against it. You are always in control. Help us to remember that. We thank you for the blessings that you are bringing to us. You are bring, leading our nation back to Jesus' cross. You are advancing research and medicine, and you are giving families more time together. And you're teaching another generation the value of hard work and a dollar. Keep us all calm and keep our economy steady. You are our salvation and our source of strength. Use this to show the world your glory. You are king over all things even this. In all things, your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Hear us, O Lamb of God, who bore all sin for us. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this evening I do have... Uh, just a couple of announcements to bring to your attention. The announcements uh, you will be able to find both on our, will be found on Facebook as well as a bulletin for this service. Um, uh, this announcement was brand new this morning. Uh, it is that St. John is canceling their uh, council slash voters meeting for this month uh, and uh, we hope to reschedule it in May. So no voters council meeting this month for St. John, uh, possibly rescheduling for May. Also, uh, this is important as well. I don't know how many parents may have already registered their children, but Camp Shatek is also canceled for this year, uh, reluctantly so, but uh, they felt that this would be best. Contact uh, Pastor Rents if you do require a refund. All right. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, we will meet here one more time. Easter morning. Easter morning when this Christ candle will be lit once again, signifying that He is risen. Hold on to that, that hope, the hope of the resurrection, that death is not the end. Jesus paid for all of our sins on Good Friday, and He rose so that we could be certain we would rise too. God bless you all. We'll see you on Easter. <laughs>